brothers in the community to look at the community control of the school system and the, and the curriculum and what was going on in the school system. The, uh, the fact that uh, we had no control over the uh, the parks and the recreation centers to a great degree, and some of them we weren't even allowed to uh, uh, be in at that point. Um, so we started organizing and organizing for around political power, trying to get people uh, in charge of the school board, trying to get people in the, the local government uh, uh, offices and so on. Uh, it became clear that there was a really serious problem, and this is Bill 68, and of course, Martin Luther King had got assassinated. Uh, the cities kind of like went up in flames across the country. I think maybe a hundred riots took place in, in major cities. Uh, obviously, the, a lot of damage was done. A lot of black people were killed as a result of it. Uh, and it became clear that the, in the surrounding areas of Baltimore, uh, militias were forming, white militias that is, they were armed to the teeth, they had a kind of racial attitude that, you know, uh, if they come out here, we'll kill them, or, you know, if they get out of hand, we'll go in there and kill them, and it became clear that we needed to have some sort of better protection in the black community, because obviously the police department was pretty much manned by some of the very people that were in the militias, the, uh, the National uh, Guard, you know, which communities tend to turn to at that point back in, in the day for protection was pretty much all a white uh, apparatus. It certainly didn't serve our interests, and that's true of the state police or the uh, FBI and so on. So we decided, so or rather people decided around the country because it wasn't here in Baltimore initially, it was all across the country. People decided that they needed to kind of like form organizations for self-defense. And, uh, you know, eventually the one that, that gained prominence was the Black Panther Party that grew up out of Oakland. And that organization spread across the country and of course, here in Baltimore, we uh, had a chapter spring up. As that chapter sprung up, uh, people, young men and women joined it, and and ultimately I joined also and discovered that it was like really not representative of what the papers were saying, what the Black Panther Party newspaper was saying, and it was not representative of what I knew about the national organization as, a, as an entity. And so at that point, you know, I started kind of like working with the, the sisters and the brothers to try to kind of like help them gain some kind of discipline, develop a, a, a better a educational perspective of what we were doing in a a more effective way, efficient way of organizing. And uh, through the process, I discovered that the person that was in charge of the Maryland Black Panther Party apparatus, uh, because at that point there were like several chapters around the state, uh, was in fact a national security agent. And uh, he had been put in place to formulate the Black Panther Party in Maryland so that they could have an opportunity to infiltrate the uh, national uh, committee that actually ran all the Black Panther Party uh, operations across the country. And uh, he would attend those meetings once a month and uh, obviously report back to the National Security Agency. And after I discovered it, I uh, do an investigation and 
Canada and infiltrate its Stokely Carmichael's organization uh, or African People's Revolutionary Party. Uh, up in Canada, he was discovered and exposed as a result of our exposure here in America. And he fled to the Caribbean where he joined the Black Liberation Movement in the Caribbean uh, uh, Islands. Uh, at some point, he caused great disruption down there within that movement, and then ultimately he disappeared. Um, the conditions that we, you know, the conditions that we were like struggling against was there was like no health care, no health care insurance, uh, which is true still today. Uh, there was, you know, enormous poverty. Uh, our children in the community were going to school hungry every day. And that, of course, 